Hello Crafty family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY projects, I have put together several of my favorite Dollar Tree DIYs to make the perfect spring decor for your home. Now to get you all started, I have included the full supply list with the links in the description box below. Now to all of my amazing subscribers and visitors, I wanted to say hey hey, and if you have not yet subscribed, you definitely should, so you could be the first to see hundreds of fresh and original craft ideas on my channel. So let's just dive in and get started. Now this project is a wood plank style wall sconce. We're going to need one or two of these Easter signs from the Dollar Tree, a pack of these quart craft sticks from Lowe's for 98 cents, and one small mason style jar from the Dollar Tree. Now we're going to grab our sign. Now I do love this carrot sign and I don't want to ruin it. So I want to be able to use this as a reversible piece. So what I'm going to be doing is using the back of the sign for the project. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my craft sticks. And what we want to do is place some vertical planks on the back with these craft sticks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting down the craft sticks. I'm going to cut down one edge flat and then we are going to overlap the edge, the bottom edge with the rounded end and then we're going to have the flat edge on top. So I'm adding some of my wood hot glue on there and I'm going to first start by lining it up with the side edge of the little board display as shown here. And then I'm going to take another craft stick and I'm just going to cut another piece again, making sure the edges are overlapped on the top and bottom, add more of that wood hot glue, and then adding that other piece on top. Now, no worries about the seams. This is going to have a plank style design. So you want to cut these pieces in various lengths. You don't want the seams to match up because you really do want it to look like a natural tiled look. So I'm just going to continue to cutting pieces at various lengths and then adding them, making sure that they have a seam in the center or somewhere along the way where it doesn't line up. And we're going to continue this pattern all along the board. Now here's the process so far. I'm about three quarters of the way down and you can see how it's all coming together. And now the entire back of the board is covered. Now you flip it over, you can see all the edges overlapped. And now all we have to do is some trimming. So you do wanna make sure you grab a cutting mat to do this. And um, so you'll have a nice protective surface. So I like to use a utility blade to use this. You could get one of these from the Dollar Tree. You could use a box cutter or even an X-Acto knife. All you have to do is run your blade carefully along the edge of your sign and these little uh, craft sticks will just break right off nice and clean as you can see here and you're just going to continue this all the way around your sign. Now as you work around the curves, you just want to be careful just running your blade carefully around the edges. Now you do want to make sure you start with a nice fresh blade. I do recommend you do that so it'll be easy to cut around all of your edges and here's everything all nice and cut and trimmed. So the last thing all we have to do is cut the inside hole at the top. And again, use the same utility blade. You just want to carefully work your way around the circle. Just take your time and that should come out really easily as well. And now that hole is nice and trimmed out and your board has a beautiful wood plank design. So now what I wanted to do is to actually stain this wood and I'm using my Jacobian stain by Minwax. Now I'm going to be applying this to only the back. You do want to be careful. I do want to maintain this sign as being reversible. So you don't want to get any stain on the other side. So I'm just being careful how I apply the stain all the way around. And here it is all stained when I left a little bit to hold there. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just touching up the edges as well. Just making sure that stain does not go to the other side. So here is the board all nice and, sty uh, nice and stained. So I'm just going to um, just turn it around and give it a nice wipe with a paper towel to remove the excess. Double checking that back side and it still looks great. And then I'm going to let this sit out to completely dry. So while that dries, I'm going to grab that little mason jar from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ring and the insert, and I'm going to take it out and give it a couple of coats of white spray paint. I used actually some a glossy for this. Now 
And here is that jar all nice and finished in that nice satin type glossy finish and I absolutely love it. Now our board is actually dry as well so we can start putting that everything together. So I'm going to grab that ring and also a piece of jute twine from the Dollar Tree. Now I just cut this piece long enough so it'll um, hold my little jar from the sign. So what I did is I wrapped it around the sign and I just want to make sure the tails of the jute twine end up about in the center of the board as shown here and that was about the length that I needed. So now I'm just going to feed the two ends of the jute twine through the ring of the jar and then I'm going to place the jar right on the front of that sign. Now to get everything to hold into place I'm just going to place one piece of the jute twine on each side of the jars and I'm just holding them in place with my fingers as shown here and then I'm just going to slide that ring right over the um, threads of the jar and over the string and screw those on tightly and this secures the jar in place. Now I love that you don't have to put any hooks or rings or drill into the board but this will actually hold it and secure it. So now all you have to do is add your greenery of choice and here I'm just using some boxwood for 97 cents from Walmart and I'm placing it in the little jar and it's perfect. Now if you don't want the ring to show you can easily cover it up with a piece of ribbon and I'm using some of this ticking stripe ribbon in black and white that I got from Amazon and I will link that in the description box below and I'm just going to cut a piece long enough to cover around the ring of the jar. Now what I'm going to do when I secure this on I am going to glue one end of the ribbon onto itself not actually onto the jar because I want to be able to remove and change this out if I want to. So when you glue the tails together, you could just rotate that seam to the back side of the jar where you don't see it. And now you have a beautiful hanging sconce arrangement with a nice cute trim on the top that you can remove and reverse. And there you have it, a beautiful trimmed board that you can use to hang your jars decor. Now this simple but sweet design is so useful and you could add greenery, some lights, or even flowers to the little jar. And now the wood trim is the star of the show and it totally transformed this Dollar Tree item. Now this is totally reversible so now you don't have to put it away after the Easter holiday. I hope you give this easy project a try. Now this project is a decorative storage jar decor piece. I'm going to be using two of these small plastic lidded containers from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do with the container, one of them I want to paint white just to show you a variation. So what I'm going to do is paint one of these little jars with my white satin spray paint by Krylon. Now I am going to be painting both of these lids and I am going to also spray paint those black. So here's everything all nice and dry. I have the black lids and one of my containers is white to show you a different perspective on how you can paint these. Now I'm gonna be adding labels to mine for decoration and I designed these myself. So one of them is this Farm Fresh. This is actually printed out on cardstock and I like to adhere these with a little Mod Podge when I put them on my projects. Now another option for this Farm Fresh Shine is I printed this out on mailing label paper so you can actually just peel and stick this to your project. The last option is if you have a cutting machine, I have created an SVG file that you can also use if you choose and you can apply this to your project. Now all of these variations are included down in the description box free to use. So I'm going to start off with the little clear container and um, I'm going to be applying the sticker label to this one. Now the first thing you need to decide is whether you want it standing straight up or do you want it sitting on its side and I decided the side orientation was the best choice for me. So I'm just going to peel off that little mailing label sticker and I'm just going to center it on my little jar. Just really cute and easy and if you want to seal this you can definitely put Mod Podge on this. You just want to make sure that your ink is completely dry. So now I'm going to work on the little white container and for this one I am going to use my cutting machine file to do this. I'm just going to make sure I peel back that transfer tape removing um, all of the parts of my design and then all you have to do is center it on the white container. So simple, cute, and easy. 
Now you just want to slowly peel back that transfer tape, making sure you don't remove any of the paint. And this worked perfectly. And now you have a cute farm fresh little jar. So now you can place these on display and decorate them however you wish. So here are both of my cute little jars and I think they are just simply adorable. Now these turned out so great and they're perfect for storing little trinkets. Now if you decide that you want to put edibles in these, you want to make sure to choose a paint that is non-toxic for your safety. Now I hope that you all give this super easy project a try. Now this project is a pair of glass farmhouse vases. Now we're going to need two of these glass vases from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is make sure our vases are really clean and then we're going to take them out and give them a couple of coats of spray paint and I'm using this white satin spray paint by Crayon and of course you can use acrylic or chalk paint if you like. So now our vases are nice and dry and we can start to customize them. Now I did want to give it a little bit of a rustic look so I'm going to be using some a black acrylic paint and I'm going to grab a craft stick to use my craft stick method of distressing the vases. Now all I'm going to do is take that craft stick and drag it along the side of the vase and as you can see those little ridges on the vase picks up that paint perfectly. It gives it a really unique and a unique texture that I absolutely love and you can apply as much as you like. Now once the body of the vase is accented, I'm just going to add a little more, a heavier coat around that top edge because it is a little thicker and that completes this vase. This is what it looks like. And now I'm just going to repeat the process on our second vase and both of them are done. So just let them sit to completely dry. So now our vases are nice and dry and I decided to, I wanted to add some of this buffalo check ribbon um, to the vase to have it more of a cohesive a farmhouse look. Now this is definitely completely optional. So what I did is I cut a piece of ribbon and what I'm going to do is glue down and fold down the edge of one side so when I wrap it around the vase no raw edges of that ribbon will be shown. So I'm going to wrap it around the smallest part of the vase and then I'm just going to glue one end on top of the other end with just the smallest dab of hot glue because I want this to be removable. You don't want to add glue to the vase, you just want to add it to the ribbon just in case you want to remove it. So now I'm just going to make one of my little quick finger bows. I always get questions about this so I will show you guys again. All I'm doing is placing the a long tail of ribbon between um, my two fingers here and then I'm going to wrap it around the thumb, the pointing finger the thumb, the pointing finger, the thumb, and the pointing finger as many times as you want and I'm doing it three times because I want a three loop bow. You cut that tail off, you're going to wrap it around the entire bundle and then take that same tail and wrap it around the loop you just made and pull tight. And you guys, that is it to make a really cute, quick, easy bow for your project. So all you have to do now is just to separate your loops evenly pull it and um, pull it a little tight and then you just trim off and add a little dovetail end to your little bow and that is it for this bow. Super simple and super easy. So now I'm just going to take this bow and I'm just going to hot glue it in the center of that ribbon we placed on the vase and that is it. I'm placing it on there and you have this cute little final touch to the little vase. I just think it's absolutely adorable. And now I'm just going to do the other one or you could just leave it plain just like it is but I wanted a matching set so here are both of my cute little vases with bows on them. So now here are these beauties on display and I just love how refreshing these look. I added some yellow wildflowers from the Dollar Tree to give it that sweet spring touch and I'm loving how bright and festive it looks. Now the way that the texture was highlighted came out so great on these and it was the perfect accent to fit into my farmhouse theme. 
Now don't get too overwhelmed by the bow on these because it is completely removable. So here are the vases in a more neutral look without the bow. Now this option really makes the texture shine and it does not take away from any kind of filler that you choose to place inside. Now you all have to let me know what you think of this project in the comments below. Now this project is a set of metal trimmed vases. Now we're going to need three of these oil and vinegar glass bottles from the Dollar Tree. And we're also going to need one of these metal grill toppers from a Dollar General. Now the first thing you want to do is take those bottles. You want to remove those toppers. They should pop right off. You want to make sure that your little bottles or vases are nice and clean and I clean them beforehand. And then once you do that, we're going to actually paint these. So I'm going to add two coats of this satin white spray paint by Krylon, but you can definitely use chalk or acrylic paint if you like. So here are the bottles they have been painted and now they're completely dry. So now we're going to grab our grill topper. Now, if you notice this grill topper, it does have some sharp edges around it. So you do want to be careful around it. I strongly suggest that you use gloves for this project. Do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> but you definitely want to protect your hands. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to measure the width of the bottle here, and I'm going to measure how wide I want to cut my metal pieces. So it needs to be cut between four and a half to five inches. So what I'm doing is I'm laying down a piece of paper under my metal um, grill here and I'm marking it at five inches and I'm only doing this so my marker doesn't go through to my little green mat there. So I'm going to mark the first piece at five inches and then I'm going to go ahead and mark two more pieces at five inches until you have three sections. Now these easily cut with a pair of scissors. Again, you want to be extremely careful with these because when you do start to cut them, they have very sharp edges. Now for the rounded corner ends, I'm gonna cut off about an inch and a half off each one of them just to make sure they have a nice straight edge and then cut off the end with the little binding as well until you have a piece that looks like this. Now I am gonna take one of my bottles and just make sure that when I wrap it around the bottle, there is enough to actually wrap it around and overlap, and there is. So I'm just gonna use this piece as a template when I make my other two pieces, and now we have three pieces cut out. Okay, so now we're gonna start bonding them to the jars. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on the jars and I'm just gonna start rolling the metal around the jars. Now each time you roll around a curve, just lift it up and kind of press that curve into the metal. There's really no need to glue this to the jars because the metal uh, grate will kind of just bond itself or kind of cling to the jars. So I'm just, each time I roll it around, I'm just kind of Kind of removing that jar and then just kind of maybe putting that little just gentle fold in there all the way around so it'll cling to the jar when it's all done now as you notice this last fold over here is the longer side so what we're going to do is we are going to be trimming that down so I'm just going to gently just lift that edge up and I'm going to be trimming that down with a pair of scissors and I'm going to trim it where it covers about half of the back and it overlaps the other side. And so now you have your completed cutout and you just want to wrap it around your jars and just make sure everything is pressed and firm into place. So I wanted to trim out the edges of the metal piece and what I did is I took six strands of Dollar Tree jute twine and I put it into a, I made a little braid here. So I made a really long braid and I'm going to be using this to trim out the top and bottom edges. So all I'm going to do is add a line by line hot glue. You definitely want to start on the back side where those pieces overlap so you won't see the start and beginning. And just add hot glue around the top edge of that metal piece, just making sure those sharp edges are nice and covered up with your braided jute twine. 
So once you wrap it around and you get around that fourth side, you're about to join it to the other end. So what you wanna do is estimate where those ends will come in contact and where they come in contact, you wanna add hot glue on the actual braided strand. Now, when you add hot glue to the braided strand, you wanna allow that to dry. And what that'll do is keep your braid from becoming unraveled as you cut it. So once that glue does dry, you wanna go ahead and take your scissors and cut it right across that area where you added your hot glue and that way your ends will be nice and bonded and then just hot glue the end of your cut piece joining in to the beginning of the piece that you wrapped around the top. Now once you press and join those together, you can remove any excess hot glue that may ooze out of that seam and then that piece is nice and bonded. And once that's done, you want to repeat that to the bottom of your bottle until both sides are covered. And here is what the metal trim will look like on your bottle. And now you just want to repeat this for your other two bottles by adding the metal trim and also the braided trim. And now here are all three all done. Really super easy to do. And just like that, they are ready to decorate and display. I mean, how cute are these bottles? I really hope that you all are enjoying these crafts so far, but I wanted to pop in really quick and let you all know that you could follow me on all of these platforms as She So Craft DEE. -E. So now let's jump right into that next DIY. Now this project is a three tier trade decor piece. We're going to need a set of three of these box containers with the metal plate and graduated sizes from the Dollar Tree. And we're also going to need two pieces of wood. Now I'm just going to be using these two pieces of scrap wood that I had left over and these are one by two and they're going to be cut to five inches along each. Now if you don't have any scrap one by two you can use a plunger handle from the Dollar Tree and you also can use a garden stake from the Dollar General which is a dollar for this project. We're going to start off with working with our containers and I love this natural color, but I did want to give them a little bit of a rustic finish. So I'm going to be using my white chalk paint and a chip brush that I got from the Dollar Tree to give it a dry brushed look all over the container and I'm keeping a wet wipe handy on the side. So I'm going to start dipping my chip brush in there and I just want to put a light coat of paint on it. Now when you do dry brushing, you just want to lightly brush that paint on. We're not trying to get complete coverage. We do want some of that natural color peeking through and this just gives it that rustic weathered look. Now we're going to do this all over the inside first and then now we're going to start around the outside. You can see I'm just kind of wisping that paint brush across there, letting some of that natural color come through. Now you can cut, uh, cut or remove your plates from the front if you like to. I left my plates on and then what I'm going to do is as soon as I painted over my plates, this is where I take that wet wipe and I just wipe the paint off the plates. I just found that this was quicker than easier than unscrewing and then adding them back on and screwing the plates back on. So I'm just going to wipe them off with that wet wipe and that's all I needed to do. And here is what the front of the tray will look like. Now once you do all of those sides, you can go ahead and just do some dry brushing on the bottom since the bottom of these trays will definitely be exposed in this project. So here is that piece all nice and painted and dry brushed. I love how this looks. So I'm going to repeat this process with the other two containers. And so now all of my boxes are all painted and I'm letting them sit to dry for the time. Now what you want to do is you want to grab um, your two support pieces, your two five inch pieces, whether you use the garden stake, the plunger handle, or the one by two. We're going to go ahead and dry brush these white as well, but I did notice that since this was a lighter wood, it didn't quite match my boxes, so I'm going to have to do a little creative blending. So what I'm doing is taking some of this nutmeg brown acrylic paint and a, another little brush that I had with little rough bristles, and I'm dry brushing that on as well. Now that was a little lighter than I expected, so what I decided to do is mix a little bit of acrylic 
black paint in with that nutmeg and this will give me a rich dark chocolate brown color and I'm wisping some of that all over the stick now there's no rhyme or reason on how you apply this you just want to apply it however you like Now once you get a pretty decent coverage of that chocolate brown color, color all over your stick, you're going to go over with more of the white and this is what blends it all in and once it's done, it matches your boxes perfectly. So now that everything has had a chance to dry, here are all of your pieces for your project. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with the bottom layer, which is the biggest box. And we'll be putting one of those support sticks in the center, then the middle piece, another supportive stick, and then the top piece. And this is the order in which we will be building our tray. Now you can definitely adhere these with wood glue if you like to, just allow 24 to 48 hours for it to dry and only do this if you want to use lightweight items on this, but you guys know me, I love my pieces to be super secure, so I will definitely be using screws for this project. So we're going to take the bottom piece of our tray. We need to find the center. You can definitely use a ruler, but a little quick hack that I love to use is just to take a piece of scrap paper and then I like to outline the size of the container on the um, scrap paper by pressing down on it and then folding that piece into quarters. Now when you do this, you find the perfect center by cutting a little uh, nip of the paper off in the middle and now I know exactly where the middle of my container is and I'm just going to mark it in the center. Now I'm going to repeat this for the other two boxes just using that same square, making sure when you place it on there it's nice and centered and then marking those holes the same exact way. Now that all our holes are marked, I am going to take my drill bit. I'm using a 7 64th inch drill bit and I'm just going to drill a hole in the center of that bottom piece. Now for the uh, little uh, stick that will attach to it, I am going to drill again inside there. Only one side of it I'm going to drill in with that same drill bit. Now to attach with screws, I'm only going to be using the two screws for this. I'm using a one and a half inch number six wood screw. So to attach the piece, I'm going to the bottom of the large square and I'm just going to drill it in until about a quarter to a half of an inch of the screw is poking out on the other side. And then take your piece that you drilled your hole in, go ahead and screw it on top of that piece that's sticking out. And this just gets the um, bond going between the screw and the box. And now you could take your drill and drill the remainder of the screw all the way in until the screw head is flushed with the bottom of that large piece. And as you can see here, it's, it's in there nice and tight and now your piece is nice and sturdy for your base. So now we're going to work on attaching the center piece and this will be done a little differently than any other one of my DV DIYs since this is a three tier tray. You'll notice it has two pieces of wood sandwiching that tray so you can't do it with regular screws. In this case I'm going to use something called a dowel screw. If you look at the dowel screw it has screw ends on both sides so there's no head on this screw. Now where I originally got this screw from was I repurposed it from one of these finials that I got from Lowe's. These have dowel screws in there but often I take them out when I use them for my project but I I keep them just in case I have another project. Now if you don't have one to repurpose, this is the packaging for one that I actually bought in store a while back. Now you're not going to need this size, you're going to need a 3 16th by 2 inch dowel screw. You can see the size is a little different. So if you buy them in store, that's the size that you will want to get. So now what you want to do is grab a drill bit that is slightly smaller than your dowel screw. So we can go ahead and start drilling our pilot holes for that dowel screw.
So we're gonna take our bottom tray and that support and on the top of that piece of wood, we're gonna use that drill bit for our dowel screw and go down about an inch down into that piece. Now the next piece we want to drill with that with that drill bit is we want to drill in the center of that, cen that center tray. And for the other piece of wood that'll attach to the other side to sandwich it in, we're going to drill in one side of that with that same large drill bit. So now we have all three pieces that will be attached together with their pilot holes in place. So we're gonna remove our drill bit and now we want to put our dowel screw in there. So I'm taking my marker and marking the center. That's how far we're going to stick this into our drill. We don't wanna go past that point. So I'm using that as a guide. And there's a little smooth part of that dowel screw where you could see where to make that mark. Now once it's secured into your drill, you're just going to carefully drill it in until it will not drill anymore. Then loosen up your chuck on your drill, just unscrew it so it will release that screw and now you see that screw is nice and embedded into the base piece. The next thing you want to do is to take your middle tray. We're going to insert the head of that screw into that pilot hole and just twist that middle tray on until it reaches all the way to the bottom. And when it gets nice and tight, you want to stop at the point where all the labels are lining up on the front. And now you have a little bit of that screw still sticking out of the top. Now this is where you'll take your other wood piece to sandwich it in and you can hand screw this right on top. Now this is put together like you would see a tray in a retail store. So that's why I love using these dowel screws because they are super secure and much more secure than using wood glue or hot glue. So now all we have to do is attach that top tray. Now we're gonna go back to our regular uh, drill bit, which is our 7 64th inch drill bit. And we're gonna drill a hole in that, that last tray and then drill a hole in the top of that piece of wood at the very top of our tray. Now to attach our tray here, we're just gonna start by hand threading the screw through the inside of the tray until it goes through about a half of an inch. Go ahead and twist it on top of your tray stand and then you can secure the rest of the length with your drill and there you have it. Everything is nice and secure. Now when you use screws, especially the dowel screw, you'll notice this tray isn't going anywhere. It's nice and sturdy. I'm tossing it around. This thing is nice and solid, perfect for gift giving or selling. So now all you have to do is the fun part, which is decorate. And here is my cute little tray. It's all decorated with a few of my favorite farmhouse trinkets. Now I'm really impressed on how great this piece turned out. And this reminds me of a piece that you would find like at a Hobby Lobby or some other high-end decor store. Now I really do think that the metal accents really give it that high-end look and are really the star of the show in this piece. Now you all definitely have to give this beautiful project a try. Now this project is a set of decorative candle stands. Now we're gonna need five of these glass candle holders and these are from the Dollar Tree. We're also gonna need two of these candle plates or a couple of these glass round cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take all of our glass candle holders, remove any of those tags, and we want to make sure that these are absolutely clean. 
Now to bond these together permanently, you definitely want to use E6000 or Gorilla Glue, something similar that has a permanent bond. For this project today, I am going to be using my hot glue because I do want to repurpose these again in the future, but this will work great as a temporary bond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a round of that hot glue right on top of one of the candle holders and sit another one on top to make a two tier piece. Now for our second piece, we are going to bond this the same way, adding our hot glue to the smaller opened end and placing the other smaller open end to it and then making sure that that's bonded as well. Now this piece will be a three tier, so we're going to put the wider end openings on top of each other to add that third tier. Again, adding that glue around that edge, and you do want to be generous with this, just go ahead and add that around and place that right on top. You want to squeeze that down, wipe away any excess, and now we have a three tier stand. So we're going to set these to the side and grab our plate. So this candle plate here, I had planned to originally use these, but I only had one in my stash. I thought I had two. So what I decided to do is use these glass cutting boards. These, I had two in my stash, so these will work perfect. You can probably also use the clear glass uh, so small plates from the Dollar Tree as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove all of the covering on those and also remove those little rubber feet on the bottom of each one of those cutting board uh, glass pieces. Now once you do that, make sure you follow up with a little rubbing alcohol and remove all of the sticky residue from the feet that were on the bottom. So now we can bond those glass rounds to the candle holders and you want to bond the smooth side to the top of the candle holders with the rough side on top on top of the candle. So you definitely want to use E6000 if you want a permanent bond but again I am using my high temperature hot glue to bond these all together for my project today. So I'm just going to bond that right in the center of that glass round and now I have one of my candle stands all completely assembled. Symbol. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our longer one and we're just going to repeat the same thing until both of our stands are glued together and here is what both of them will look like when they're all bonded. So now I'm going to take it out and give it a couple of coats of some of this flat black, uh, flat white spray paint by Krylon. All right, so here is the tray with the paint all nice and dry. So I'm just grabbing one of the candle tray stands. And what I decided to do at the last minute was to add some of this metal ribbon. Now I've had this on hand for a little while and I've been wanting to use it in a project. So I didn't think of this until after these dried. So I was like, this would look great trimmed out on these candle stands. Now, if you decide to add this to your project, you definitely want to do this before you paint, but there is a way that I'm going to add it on to make sure it gets a good bond. So what I'm going to do is take a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going around that painted edge of the plate top portion just to make sure that it's a nice raw glass edge and then cleaning it off with a moist cloth just to make sure that it's a nice glass a raw edge to bond our metal ribbon to. So I'm taking that flat edge of the ribbon and I'm placing that down and you notice my, my stand is upside down so I'm placing the flat side down against the mat and then I'm measuring around cutting it about maybe a half an inch longer than what I need to trim it out. So once that piece is nice and cut, we are going to bond it. Again, you can use your E6000 if you want this to be permanent, um, but I am gonna demonstrate with my high temperature hot glue. So I, what I like to do is I like to start in the middle of the band and I'm just gonna add about maybe a two or three inch strip of that glue and I'm just going to bond I'm going to bond it right in the center. Go ahead and press and hold until that glue bonds to the glass. Now, once that does bond, we can start to bond the um, two tail ends of that. Now, I'm just going to add a bead of your adhesive. You just want to add a bead of it all the way down the length of the ribbon. And then once that bead is on there, you want to stretch it tight and wrap it around the edge, just making sure it's nice and flush with that top edge. Now you definitely want to work sure, make sure you're working on a flat surface, so make sure everything is nice and bonded evenly. And you're just going to repeat this on the other side, and it'll overlap just slightly, and you do make sure you don't have any gaps. 
So once that sits to dry for a few minutes, this is what your metal edging trim will look like. I think it looks really pretty. So now I'm gonna go out and grab my other stand that's nice and dry. And what I'm gonna do is flip that upside down and use the remaining ribbon. And I'm gonna trim this one out the same exact way. So here's that ribbon all nice and bonded and I'm just removing any excess glue that may have oozed out of the seam. Now to make sure that that ribbon does not come off, I'm going along that bottom of the, of the stand along the edge where that metal ribbon is and just adding a thin bead of hot glue. This just makes sure it stays in place and won't, co won't come off your candle stand while it's being displayed. And now here are both of our nice, beautiful stands with that metal trim on there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out and give it a couple more coats of the spray paint of choice to make sure everything is nice and blended together. So now that that edging has been nice and spray painted to blend in, here is what the two trays will look like. I think and they look absolutely beautiful and all you have to do now is decorate. So there's a couple options you can use to decorate. Now I'm gonna use a couple of these wreaths that I had left over from Christmas. These are little mini wreaths that I got on clearance and they look like they are they could be used in the spring. But you can also make a wreath. I'm using the eight inch wreath form from the Dollar Tree and I use some Walmart eucalyptus branches to decorate it. And if you wanna see a tutorial, I will link it in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box below. And then all you have to do is add a couple of LED candles of your choice and these are available at the Dollar Tree. And here are my two candle holders on a display and I think that they turned out so gorgeous. Now I wanted a crisp and clean white finish to these for my space and these did not disappoint in the final result. And I think this metal ribbon trim was the perfect accent to the edge and it really does give these a higher end look. And then you just top these with some mini wreaths and candles to finish them and you have a beautiful decor setting. How amazing do these look? Now if you decide to use the wreath DIY option, here these are on display. Now I really do love the vibrant color of the Walmart eucalyptus greenery and it looks amazing with these. And this time I paired them with some larger LED candles that were from Walmart as well. Now you all have to let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now this project is a large cloche decor piece. Now we're gonna need one plate and I got this for 50 cents from Walmart, but you can get a plate from the Dollar Tree as well. We're also going to need one candle holder from the Dollar Tree or any candle holder of your choice. We're also going to need one of these large cloche bell covers from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use the lid of one of these candy bowls from the Dollar Tree or any lid of your choice. We're also going to need some wood beads from the Dollar Tree or you can get these from Amazon. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our cloche bell cover and we want to remove that sticker. So you just wanna carefully peel it back. And once you peel it back, you just wanna wipe away any residue that it leaves behind until you have a nice, clean surface to work with. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove that vent cover at the top and this was really easy. All I did was bend up each edge and it did just pop right off and the little black piece just pops off as well and we could throw that to the side. Now it does leave two holes at the top but we're gonna be covering that with that lid from that candy bowl lit, uh, dish. Now the Dollar Tree does have some other kind of small lidded bowls and you can use those lids as well but I had this candy bowl dish cover on hand and I'm gonna place that on top. Now to adhere it, I'm just gonna use my hot glue. You do wanna make sure you use a clear acrylic type glue stick in this so you won't see it. And I'm carefully adding one layer around the top and then pressing it on top of my bell cloche. So now that that's adhered, we could start working on the stand portion. So I'm going ahead and taking that plate, you wanna make sure you remove any stickers and clean the bottom surface as well. 
And then I'm gonna take my candle holder piece and I'm gonna be adhering this to the bottom. Now I am gonna be using hot glue for this, but if you want a permanent hold, make sure you use E6000 Gorilla Glue or something stronger. So now just add the glue of choice around your candle holder and press it into the center of the bottom of the plate. Now once that does glue and adhere, you have a nice stand to place your bell cloche right on top. So I'm doing a test fit here and everything fits perfectly on top of the plate. So now it's time to decorate with whatever you want. And what I have on hand is this little wreath. Now I made this little wreath in a previous DIY and all it is is eucalyptus branches from Walmart and the Dollar Tree mini wreath forms. And I'll link this in the upper right hand corner of this video and also in the description box if you would like to make one as well. So I'm gonna take that wreath and set it on top of my plate. I'm gonna take some beads that I've put on some elastic string that's also available at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to add one of these battery candles that I had on hand for the center. Now once you put the topper on there it makes a really cute display and then all you have to do is to add any other accents you like. So I'm placing the elastic strand of wood beads right around it and it just gives it that nice little final touch that I really love and that is really all you have to do to make this beautiful display. And now here it is on display, and I love how simple and sweet this piece looks in my space. Now even though this cloche and lid are made of plastic, it really does look like a large glass cover that you would usually see in a high-end store. Then all you have to do is add some decorative beads around the bottom and it gives it that finishing touch to complete the look. Now I do love this fresh and clean version, but you can also make this in other finishes as well. Now I did take the plate and lid and I painted them with some flat black spray paint and then I grabbed a black candle holder to make this into a totally different look. And here is the cloche with the black finish and I love how this version turned out. I do love the sleek look of the black finish on this piece and it really does look high end. Now just like the first one, I also added some black beads too for just that finishing touch. Now you all have to let me know what version of this project do you love the most? Now this project is a set of farmhouse planters. Now we're gonna need two of these plastic popcorn boxes from the Dollar Tree and they are sold in two packs. So go ahead and grab your popcorn boxes and we wanna remove them from all of the packaging, making sure you remove the labels on the side and the bottom. Now I'm going to take it out and give it a couple of coats of my Zenser 123 primer to cover up that popcorn design. And then I'm going to follow up with some flat white spray paint or you can use your chalk or acrylic paint if you like. Now here are my two popcorn containers all nice and dry on the outside. Now I wanted to give it a farmhouse look so I wanted a little farmhouse label so I have these little farm fresh labels that I created and I will provide a link to these down in the description box below. I have a printable that you can print on paper and also an SVG that you could cut on your cutting machine. So before I add those, I want to go ahead and trim off the top of the containers and I'm using that same ticking stripe ribbon all the way around. You just want to cut it where it overlaps at least one inch. Now I'm going to use my hot glue to apply this. Now keep in mind when you do apply this ribbon, you want the top edge of the ribbon to cover up those scallops. I didn't want the scalloped edge to be showing in my project, so I just aligned it right above those scallops so we'll have a nice ticking stripe edge instead of a, a scalloped edge. 
Now, once you get all three sides covered up with that ribbon, we're just gonna do the back overlap and fold in the raw edges. And here is what one looks like. Go ahead and repeat this for your second one and you have two completely outlined containers. So now I'm just going to add my little label. Now you can print this on label paper, you can print it out on cardstock, whatever you like. And then I'm just going to place it right beneath that ribbon trim. Now, since I'm using sticker, sticker paper, it's self adhesive, but if you use cardstock, you can apply this with a bit of Mod Podge on the back and they hold on there very well. Now here are my two Farm Fresh stickers on here, ready to go. So now I'm going to add a little bit of distressing. So I'm using some black acrylic paint and again I'm going to use my craft stick method to apply the paint. I'm going to be applying this really lightly to the corners and the bottom edges of this container. Again I love this process. I love adding it with a craft stick. It just makes it look so rustic and natural and when you add it you could just add as little or as much as you like. Now I'm gonna be doing this for both of the containers and when they're all done, you want to allow these to sit to completely dry. So now that our pieces are nice and dry, the fun part comes, it's time to embellish. So I grabbed some fall picks. I also grabbed some of these little pomegranate little stems, some eucalyptus stems. I also grabbed a couple of potted plants. I have these from Ikea. I love to decorate with these. You can use pumpkins, whatever your heart desires for your arrangement. And check out how gorgeous these turned out. I absolutely love them. Now these beautiful fall colors, they are just so perfect to accent the black and white boxes on this set. And those little labels just give it that classic farmhouse touch to finish off the look. Now, of course, I had to make these interchangeable as well, and I added some potted greenery from Ikea for a sweet year-round look. Now you guys, I love all of these DIYs. They were so much fun to create today and I hope that I have inspired you to get creative. Now I do love them all, but let me know in the comments which one of these projects today was your absolute favorite. Let me know in the comments below. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now also be sure to subscribe by clicking that She's So Crafty logo on your screen and hit that bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. It doesn't cost a thing. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.